Greetings friends, welcome back to the fourth episode of Building the Falcon's Nest here on Cube Brick. It's been another two weeks since you saw the build and boy do we have some cool progress to talk about today. First of all, and the most important thing is that we are almost completely done with making the rock work, so now it's time for some serious and more regular building. And that is of course what I've already started with the basic concept of the gate and the walls surrounding it, so that is something that we'll be talking about today as well. So yeah, it's going to be another fun adventure with the Falcons. But before we get into all of that, please consider subscribing to the channel and smacking that like button if you end up enjoying today's episode, because that way we have a chance for this series to be recommended to other LEGO Castle Maniacs like you and I, and as we all know, the more the merrier, right? But anyway, with all that being said, it's time to see some progress, so let's get into today's episode right now. So the first thing I did with having all of the parts from the previous episode's hole was making the angled part of the rock work above the water. I have to admit that this wasn't an easy task. I spent like 2 or 3 days on just thinking about how do I even approach it and figuring out the right angles and connections to make it work. But in the end, it came out very good in my opinion. I decided to make it slightly different than the underwater part, meaning in more of a straight line so that I won't have too much problems with making the fortress walls later on. And with that small part done and the corners matched almost perfectly, I could move on to the right side with a more of a straight rockwork building. But before I sat down to build it in the evening, I got lucky that day and got me two more falconeers in the local supermarket. So that brings my team to now five in total, which got me very excited and eager to build some more. So as in the previous episode, the pattern was pretty much straightforward. First stacking all of the dark grey slopes representing the wet rocks and then another line or two of dry light grey slopes. Nothing new here at the moment, because it was mostly copying the pattern from the front, but it seems like a lot of you guys like this technique, so why change anything if it looks good, right? Ok, I might have added a couple more of these green claws representing the seaweed, but overall I just stacked the slopes till I finished this side all the way to the back. Then, having the three front sides ready, the time came to make the back side as well. And that of course, I had to start with preparing the previously built underwater section by smoothing it out with some plates and then making the outline of the water level. Making the water itself was actually a pretty easy and calming task, just making these small segments with 1x2 plates and tiles I got in my previous order and attaching them to the prepared rock work and then we were all set for making the upper part. And that itself was even easier, so I made it in a snap. Hey, wait a minute, something's missing here. Okay, there we go, much better. So with that done and all of the back covered in slopes, I could finally start outlining the fortress itself. Yes guys, it's finally happening. After way too much rock stacking, we can move on to the more enjoyable part, that is the actual buildings. So what I did was mark in the walls of the fortress with some bricks and place a tower placeholder right where the angle rock work is. The walls being 4 studs wide I think it's a good option showing that the outpost is actually strongly fortified without taking too much space on the courtyard. But the tower itself will have to be a really solid one. Not only is it the most representative structure of the build, but also it has to be as sturdy as possible because it will be tall. And I mean like too tall probably, 
but how exactly will get clearer when I actually get to this place. First, we have to make the walls all around the structure, starting with the entry gate to the fortress. You may remember me talking about the bridge I want to make going to the gate, so I best start with that. I wanted it to be detachable so that when I have to pack it up and drive a couple hundred kilometers to a convention, it will still be intact after assembly. Therefore, I made it connected with some Technic pins and that I think should be more than enough, especially when I will make the support pillar at the end of it. For now, let's just leave it plain as it is and maybe we'll add some details at the end of the episode. So, with the main entry path drafted, I started making the walls trying out a pattern that I will be using and then moved on to the gate. And that, I've started with making the portcullis with a technique I haven't seen anybody use yet and I gotta say that I really like the design I came up with. Mostly I see people making those with regular plates and tiles like in the 10305 set, but you know me, I had to get creative with it. I mean, it wouldn't be a good choice if I wanted to make the mock fully playable, but the gate will remain open, so I think that's more than enough for that. All is nicely detailed with mostly ingots, and if you're wondering how I managed to rotate the direction of the stats on the top, it's actually pretty easy. And illegal, but hey, whatever works, right? And with the gate prototype done, all I had to do was making the walls around it, slowly starting from the left side, checking out some smooth looking patterns until I made most of the height I'm aiming at and when I had that established, well, you know the deal. More repetitive work until I got the other side built as well. I decided to go with a sort of a smooth and clean look without any moss spots or bigger cracks in the wall using mostly masonry and regular 1x2 bricks with a small addition of some ingots and headlights. I will later on add probably 3 or 4 more bricks in height so that the portcullis would be realistically fitted in the gatehouse, but for now I'm good with what I have because before I move it higher I'll have to come up with some cool machiculations for the gatehouse. The walls on the other hand will probably not have those. I think there is no sense in it since the whole fortress is on an island and there is no way the enemy would come close to the walls and try to breach them, so I plan to make only the crenellation on the side walls. But of course I have a constant brainstorm in my head on how to approach the rest of the walls and basically the whole fortress structure, so take every plan I talk about with a grain of salt because I still have time for all of that. For now, I just wanted to make the final touch for this episode so that I can make a worthy cover photo, so I started tiling up the bridge and more or less putting the figs on it. It's of course all due to change when I will add the parapets on the sides and the foundation below, but for now at least it makes a nice looking starting point and an overall idea for the bridge. Overall I am happy of how much progress was I actually able to make for this episode. I mean just look at this beauty. The rocks are done, the water surrounds it all, we have the first draft of the bridge and a tall menacing gate leading into a fortress. If it continues to go like this, it will truly be a great looking piece of medieval architecture when I'm done with it. But what are your thoughts on the progress I've made? Do you like how the build is looking at the moment? Or maybe you would change something in it? Let me know in the comment section below. The series will come back again in two weeks as usual with even more great progress on the mock, so thanks for watching, have a great rest of the day, and until next time, all you gotta do is keep it bricking.